Hello, welcome to another Facts and Dimensions tutorial video. This time I'm going to show you how to connect a using click to our Snowflake database. And I'm going to do a Snowflake version of all the other connection databases as, as time goes on too. So, um, add new data, data connection, Snowflake. At this point, of course, you'll have already requested access to our Snowflake uh, data through the Snowflake uh, marketplace. I'll be making a video on how to do that. Um, so this presumes you've already got a Snowflake account. So I'm going to connect to my Snowflake account. I'll use a, a demo account we've made for this demo. So server for our demo one. And a database named it on our one anyway but you can name it whatever you want when you set up the share on your snowflake account that's what i call it that's actually the name of the share um, and then the name of the warehouse so you have to go back to your snowflake account to find out what your warehouse is called and in our case i've just called it fad wh and the role, um, I'm just using the account admin one for this test account. And then the username and password. So that'll be your username and password you, can, you set up when you created your um, Snowflake account. I'm going to put mine in, of course, for the demo. And test. Okay. Ah. I won't re-record this video because actually I imagine a lot of people get this issue. Um, I need to add the HTTP thing in. It's already there. Invalid Snowflake server name format. The value without protocol name is expected. Oh, I need to call it something different apparently. I'll just call it Snowflake Fad, I guess. Right. Snowflake server name format. Value without protocol is expected. All right. I need to put it without, not with. Okay, right. Uh, then I'd need to allow access, or you on your Snowflake account would need to allow access to click you. So I'm going to do that on my test account. Um, the way you do that, I'll just talk while I'm doing it. Um, you go, into, you go into your Snowflake account, go into admin. Uh, you need to be set up going in as your account admin. And then security. Then if you've already got a um, policy set up, you can edit it and then just add the IP address. So I'm going to just copy this into ours. I would share the screen, but it's sharing other stuff as well. So I won't do that. But if you're still stuck, you can always ask on the forum. Just added that IP address to allowed IPs on Snowflake. Um, obviously, you can just type allow IPs on Snowflake in Google and you'll get the instructions. Anyway, right, so I've done that. Connection again. Okay, close, excellent. Create and analyze. Now, Snowflake, I actually set it up so that all of our schemes and tables are already available. Um, the reason being that Snowflake nicely presents it by the schema, whereas Azure, it's by table. So if I, if I put them all in when you first connect, there'll be 6,000 tables, which is rather too many. Uh, I suppose I could stop the video now, but let's just have a little play. Probably taking a moment the first time around because it'll be switching on my uh, Snowflake warehouse, which, which I think takes a few seconds. That actually just took over a minute, so I paused the video. But there you go. Just want to see how fast it is if I click another one. I have got my Snowflake server set to extra small server. Um, one thing I do notice is that if 
the data we're dealing with is absolutely massive, it's still quick. All right, let's just try that actually. This is going beyond the, if you've already connected, you've already seen what this video is meant for. All right, but you can carry on watching if you're interested. Uh, National Stats UPRN, that's a huge table. It's got um, hundreds of millions of rows. We're still doing a preview. Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. So, thanks very much. Bye.